All right. Our boy Radius community member VIP wrote an article, Beginners Should Use a Pre-Configured NeoVim Distribution. Now, I have a lot of thoughts on this, so I'm actually pretty excited about this. So let's find out. Maybe we're going to nitpick it. Maybe we're not. I believe that Beginners to NeoVim should use a pre-configured distribution. I'm talking about distributions such as Lunar, Chad, Astro, Lazy. You get it. Um, okay. Okay. I expect a good defense for this because I actually, I think I have the opposite take. I've used uh, everything in my own minimal configurations to huge, sometimes bloated distributions like uh, Lunar Vim. Damn, doing Chris App Machine like that. Uh, from my experience, I still believe that uh, those starting out should look toward using pre-configured distributions and at a later time tailor their own. Okay, okay. A whole new world. Actually, you know what? Maybe I could buy this. Maybe, maybe. A whole new world. Coming from a managed editor, ooh, I like that term, a managed editor, newcomers may get overwhelmed with the sheer number of choices that come with NeoVim. Fair. Unless you use Arch, by the way, then you're used to it. <laughs> Facts. Uh, Pre-configured NeoVim setup lightens the configuration load. My main complaint about the ecosystem is that it's too vast. The countless plugins, unlimited configurations, and the knowledge needed to get started is bewildering. That's where a pre-configured distribution comes into play. I will say my first time ever configuring Vim with VimScript, I still remember Vim RCs felt magical. I had no idea what they meant. I copied blindly from my coworker. It felt so uncomfortable. It felt so foreign. And I was just like, what the hell is even happening here? And so I get, I get the feeling. I get the feeling. And I had a whole goal that my Vim configuration at one point was only like 200 lines long, 150 lines long. I think at one time I got it all the way down to like 75, and this included a few plugins and all that. What the hell is even that was me all the time? These configurations act as curated showcases, offering a glimpse of what plugins and configuration types are available. By trying different distribu uh, distributions, you will figure out which plugins and settings resonate with your unique coding style and requirements. It's like finding the right pair of shoes in an infinite store. Each fits and feels differently, and you'll never truly know what's comfortable until you have tried several. Okay, okay, okay. Monkey see, monkey do. The exposure to different types of configuration help guide newbies on different ways to write their own. I know that after looking at several different formats, I found what stuck uh, to me. Yes, I am referring to using others' configurations as a reference too. Try them out first, then delve in deep and see how it is done. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of... The problem with this is that there's just so much bewildering going on to begin with that when you try to dive in deep to something like Lunar Vim, there's just so much to it. I think it's really hard to kind of... That first step is a big first step, whereas something like Kickstart, I think, is like a really great first step. Kickstart is so good. It just gives you exactly what you need. I've actually was thinking about doing like a Kickstart extension and just have like Kickstart but Prime's version, right? And just like throw in a few plugins and a few key maps that I find really crucial, and that's it. We're talking to like Fugitive, Undo Tree, Telescope, Harpoon, uh, and just like keep it super, super simple or, or and LSP, like, right? Like a, just a really – like it's just – Prime Kickstart, right? Just a little bit more and give a basic explanation of everything that I do, right? I feel like that would be pretty cool. My video, my YouTube video is like that, but it goes with the full setup of everything. Instead, Kickstart's one file, just like a really constrained version of it all. You know what I mean? By exploring different NeoVim configurations, you get inspiration from tried and tested configurations. And after some time, it's easy to modify the configurations a little more to your liking. True. Don't stop there. I still believe that after you try out multiple NeoVim distributions is to write your own. At some point, or at this point, you know what exists and what you like. You've seen examples of how everything is glued together, and you're graduated from Beginner Academy. A super easy way to start is to use Kickstart. Absolutely. This configuration is very minimal and contained within one file, meant to be a launch pad for your own configuration. Absolutely. I don't think sticking with one distribution forever is the best idea. You get used to another person's particular setup and feel, which may not reside completely with you. When you write your own, you get an even deeper understanding of your editor and how it all works. When something goes awry and the things are bound uh, to do so, what do you think is the kind of uh, let's see, ah, what do you think this kind of work is about? I don't really understand this parenthetical. To tell you the honest truth. You can figure out pretty quickly how to resolve it since you built it. This is my opinion. I'm not responsible if your feelings were wounded throughout this read. <laughs> I like that ending quite a bit. All right. So opinion time. I think that if you want to start out with Vim, 
Use your current editor slash IDE and go with Vim Motions first. I think learning Vim Motions will make it drastically easier to switch to Vim. Like if you don't have a pretty good grasp on them, you are just fighting so many battles at once and it is a pain in the ass. So I highly recommend learning the basics of motions where you can do a proficient text editing first. Second, I do not, I honestly, I am, besides for Lazy Vim, which I do need to check out because if I'm not mistaken, Falky does Lazy Vim and Falky is, uh, yeah, Falky does it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Falky, ah, Falky, ah, Falky. The greatest of all, like, I mean, Falky is the truest of all champions of uh, NeoVim. He is the he is the guy that holds up like a quarter of the ecosystem. Him and TJ are responsible for a huge amount of the, of the ecosystem. Just absolutely love this guy's work. Uh, so I could probably be interested in this one. The problem I have with any of these uh, of any of these is to make edits to understand them is a huge leap. It's just a huge leap to understand what's happening because there's so much underlying knowledge, project structure, layout, how files are executed and sourced. What is file pl type plugins? What is after? What is plugin? What's the difference? How are these things happening? What is a NIT? What is Lua? How much Lua do you need to know, right? Like, it really is very, very extensive. Whereas something like Kickstarter or Kickstart is just, I, I don't, I honestly think that you should use, I, I have like an opposite take. I think you should use pre-configured NeoVim distributions if you're sick of trying to set up NeoVim. If you know it all and you don't care and you just want something that everybody else uses where you can look up all the shortcuts and you can just learn someone else's stuff and you're just perfectly fine. I think that is when you want to switch to something like Lazy Vim and just say, you know what? I don't care anymore. Someone else do it. Just keep me up to date. Give me the best stuff. And that's that. That's my personal opinion. But when you're starting off, I think you should start off with Kickstart. That's my opinion. Okay, opposite take as Radius here. I know it's a little different. I like how you formed it, though. I can't say you're wrong uh, just because I think in the end, anybody who's sufficiently motivated, whether they start off with a distribution or start off raw dogging it with Kickstart, I don't think either of them will end anywhere but in a really good, knowledgeable place, right? Anyone who's sufficiently motivated will do it no matter what, right? People have learned how to program by just looking up references of C and learning how to program and doing stuff with like a Linux manual and a C manual, right? And like, that's it. So any, like just sufficient motivation is all you truly need and you'll get anything done. I think that that probably speaks more to, to it than anything else. But one thing that I feel like is missing here is why should you use NeoVim in the first place? Why should you use any of these distributions? VS Code exists. Why would you ever do that? Uh, the reality is this, is that getting closer to how your environment actually works will only expand your mind. In fact, I even have something on my to-do list here in the next six months is what I'm going to do, is I'm going to spend one week purely using Ed. And the reason being is that I really want to get great with, great with said and awk and, and just like all the command line tools and really just plus one my ability to work with the environment in a unique way. And I know it's like reenacting the Civil War. It's like truly reenacting the Civil War going back to Ed. But I want to give it a try. I want to understand what people went through and what was the motivation for all these tools we take for granted today. And what can they do? Because I think there's a lot more to it that I'm missing that perspective, that understanding of it all. Ed is like, think of Ed as like the first editor. It literally stands for the standard editor, right? It's the first, it's like, it, it's the first one, right? And so it's like something that I feel like I'm genuinely missing in my head was, which was like, what is the truest motivation for these things? And so I would love the idea of just using something, reenacting that civil war, understanding where everything came from. Uh, for me, it just makes sense to kind of work back from abstract to concrete, uh, or the most abstracted to the most concrete. Uh, I don't think you should start at Ed. It would make no sense. I'm not even sure if you should start at Vim. Whenever someone asks me, should I start with Vim? I say, use IntelliJ. Uh, I just think it's a better experience. I think the IntelliJ uh, IDE uh, Vim emulator is just the best in class. I think IntelliJ just generally is like the best in class IDE. Um, the community additions out of this world. So that's personal thought. Uh, and then go from there into Vim. That's what I do. Uh, that's what I did. I thought it was great. I did use VS Code for like six months. I thought it was doo-doo. I just couldn't really love it. I kept trying to love it, and I just kept hating it every single time. Uh, all that's personal opinion. But at the end of the day, whether you use one or not, it really is just your motivation to do it. And if your motivation is to understand your system and to become a more proficient editor, 
something like Vim will be the maximum load of proficiency, but it requires you to learn your system and to engage with it and to customize it to exactly how you think. Because that's the thing that that's what Vim offers. And the thing is, is you may not even realize how much Vim is uh, available, right? You may not realize that you can API, you, you then you have all this stuff right here. So you can like NVim create, you can create your own buffer, right? And creating your own buffer means that you, you actually create place where you can put text. You can programmatically do a whole bunch of stuff. You can do so dang much. And once you learn all these ways in which you can programmatically edit your editor, then you can build anything you want for it if you need it, which is beautiful. The name is the Primogen. 